We have charged three men in relation to a complex homicide investigation that originated in the city's northeast over the weekend. At approximately 7.40 p.m. on Saturday, December 3rd, we were called to the 0100 block of San Diego Way northeast for a check on welfare call. The caller had heard a loud noise and was concerned for the welfare of the people in the residence. Upon arrival, patrol officers did not locate anyone requiring assistance. The next day, we received information about a possible homicide that occurred at the same location on Saturday. As a result, an investigation began that involved a number of police resources in an attempt to corroborate the details provided and locate the man believed to have been harmed. The investigation led officers to a residence in the 100 block of Dover Tree Place Southeast where four men were taken into custody. Two vehicles were seized at the residence and search warrants were executed on both the vehicles as well as the residence at Dover Tree Way Southeast and San Diego Way Northeast. On Monday, December 5th, 2016, officers located a body believed to be that of 17-year-old Ezeldine Alogadi in a remote area just north of Morley. An autopsy, an autopsy is currently underway today. In addition to locating the body of the victim on Monday, investigators also located a fifth individual believed to be connected to the investigation. He was taken into custody but has since been released without charges pending further investigation. Three of the four individuals arrested at the Dover property on Sunday have been charged. The fourth was released from custody without charges. Ahmed Abid, 24, Muhammad Khalil, 28, and Ashraf Ajil, 23, have been charged with accessory after the fact to murder. They will next appear in court on Thursday, December 8, 2016. And the investigation continues, and we'd ask anyone with information contact the Homicide Unit tip line at 403-428-8877 or Crime Stoppers anonymously. And I'll try to answer whatever questions I can. Can you tell us how these three locations are linked, the two houses and then Morley, obviously, and we know what happened there, but there was a fifth person that was found there too. Um, well, the fifth person, okay, so the, the we believe the original incident took place at the San Diego residence. Um, investigative strategies utilized at the onset of the investigation led us to the Dover address. So that would be your two scenes. And then the third scene would be the location of the body in Morley. You say the original incident, do you mean the death? Right. And you think right. That the body was moved to those other locations? Um, we're not sure, we'll continue to figure that out as the investigation unfolds, but we believe the homicide occurred in San Diego Way and then the body was removed from there and ultimately, as we know, located in Morley. Can you tell us about the people charged? Do they live in one or do they live in these homes? I believe some are associated to San Diego Way and I'm not sure about their connection to the Dover address. Of the three that were charged, do they have any prior police that you guys know from prior incidents? Based on the age of the of the victim being 17 and we're not going to uh, get into backgrounds relationships or or histories either way of and extend that same courtesy to the accused in this matter how, how would you describe their relationship well they're all they're all known to each other but how they're known to each other is not something we'd get into now uh, uh, that's still unclear but we're hoping that'll become more clear as the investigation unfolds so you said you believe some of them are linked to the San Diego way. Is that the people charged and the victim? I believe they're all, well, they all know each other, and I believe the common address amongst the group is San Diego way. I'm just not sure in what capacity off the top of my head. Were they, but they were rented there, so do you know? Well, some of them lived there. I just don't know which one's off the top of my head and whether they rented or owned. I don't know that information. Okay, but you don't think that any of them rented or lived or owned at the, the Dover address? I'm not sure off the top of my head what the association to the Dover address is. What was the situation going on yesterday with the fire pit extraction of the residents in Dover? Well, on I, th I believe it was Sunday night the, uh, at the onset of the investigation. Um, investigative strategies led us to the Dover address where it was apparent there was a fire in the backyard. 
so police intervened and it would appear that there was uh, attempts to destroy evidence going on uh, by way of the fire. You guys originally met there on Saturday, um, didn't find anything, and then on Sunday had more information that there might have been a homicide. Can you talk about where that idea came from? I know the neighbor was the person who originally reported it, but. Well, thankfully, a member of the community who uh, become aware uh, of the event uh, on Saturday night, sometime between the event and Sunday evening, uh, had the courage to come forward to police and articulate uh, what he knew. So it took, um, so investigators were called out and it took some time to piece together and corroborate that story to see what we even had initially. Um, you know, most of our homicide investigations, you're called to a scene where there's a body and potentially witnesses and you know what went on and then the investigation unfolds from there and this one, uh, the whole thing had to be put together from start to finish which uh, causes um, delays for sure. Uh, it's not necessarily m more difficult, you know, it's, um, there's an element of a tragedy to any homicide, especially when it involves a young person. Any weapons recovered? Uh, there has been weapons recovered and there'll be subsequent examination of those weapons to determine if at all uh, involved. Is there a kind of weapon? Uh, firearms. The noise that the neighbor heard, was it a shot, was it screaming? I believe the initial report Saturday was of what sounded like a gunshot. Do you have any idea if there was a gunshot heard, police attended the scene that evening, um, does it appear that the, the incident that occurred at that residence was somehow covered up um, in that time while police were on scene? Well, we're still trying to figure that out exactly, but it would appear that uh, when officers attended, they did everything they could to, to try to determine what the nature of that call actually was. We're unable to do so, which is uh, not uncommon. We attend lots of those. And until um, the intimate details were provided to police and corroborated, um, that's when we were able to confirm that um, something happened Saturday night. Did officers actually go into the house on, on Saturday? No, I believe there was nobody there and the house was in darkness. Are you still looking for Cassetta? No. Meaning you've already talked to her or? Uh, she's uh, going to be spoken to, I believe, uh, at some point today. But she's been in contact with police, so uh, she'll be interviewed this afternoon. So yeah. based on the charges, you don't actually know who's responsible for this mass Not yet. Um, we do have uh, a pretty good idea, but it, uh, it's going to take a little bit more investigation to put it all together, uh, especially with some of the uh, the, the timelines we're dealing with now um, <coughs> with prosecuting these offenses. There's um, uh, a lot more work to be done on the front end of things, which can sometimes delay charges. Any idea why that location was chosen in your board? Uh, not really. I would imagine it would have something to do with the potential remoteness of it. You said you've been in contact with Marshall. Is she still considered a witness or is she a person of interest? Well, she'd be a person of, of interest in, in what her uh, involvement uh, in this was will determine uh, the conclusion of her interview. Is there any indication that there were more than the people listed on that release that were at the house at the time of this incident? It's possible. The more uh, interviews we do, the more we'll get an idea of that. But anybody who we haven't spoke to that has knowledge or was involved is encouraged to come forward and speak to police. Was it a party? Was it another kind of gathering? Uh, was it gathering of, of some kind? I don't know what's to what, if it was a party or Is what? alcohol or anything like that <coughs> thought to be a factor in this? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that. Did the person who come forward, was he at the gathering or was he getting information third hand, second hand? I, I believe third party. Sorry, you might have mentioned this before. When you said that they all knew each other, did that include those charged knew the victim? I believe so, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Are you guys looking at them for any other crimes? Or are they linked to any other things in the past that you guys have been looking at? Well, what we're looking into is the homicide and then um, the disposal of the victim's body, those two separate occurrences. So the what, what happened 
uh, as far as the disposal of the body is more clear, which is the reason for the charges. And then we're still um, working investigatively to try to firm up what happened in relation to the, the homicide itself. Can you, talk about the Sorry, Can you talk about the discovery of the body? Was it someplace concealed? Was it, were you able to find it without them leading you to it? How did that? Uh, there was, um, there's been varying degrees of cooperation amongst uh, the individuals involved in this. So we had some assistance, but based on the, uh, the snowfall in the area, um, it wasn't easy to find, um, but it didn't, didn't take that long.